So even though I was actually trying to use this theme, I couldn't quite get everything worked out the way that I wanted. Um, even though I kind of like the style still, there were some things like I would have to have this image on top of every post, otherwise the text will just display on a black box. And so it's, it's nice and stylish, but it doesn't quite give me as much freedom and flexibility. And I had wanted something clean and simple like I recommend. So I finally just changed to Florence, which was the one that I was going to use originally. It's also not perfect, um, but it's clean. I can add pictures, but I don't have to. So that the title can still just stand on its own with text. And so this is what I have right now. And all I've done is um, customize the sidebar a little bit. I just added one big, this is just one big logo. I made it in Photoshop, but you could have a text logo in, I mean, you could make it with a lot of different programs, even my free online graphics editor. Um, I added a, a tagline. I used these two different colors because otherwise you can't really tell if it's urban epics or urbane pics. You might read it wrong. I have to be careful up here with this um, with this URL. When I write it, I'm going to have to write capital U, capital P, like if I have it on the back of my book cover or other promotional material. As long as I write it this way, people won't mistake it for something else. Oops, and I did it wrong. That's what I meant, urban epics. It is a little confusing, so it's not ideal, but um, as long as I keep things capitalized like that, it works okay. The site's pretty clean. I did a short about the author that links to my bio or the books page. I have a couple of, um, of social media things. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and these just link to my basic profiles that I use for creativity. It's not ideal because I'll, I'll be mixing audiences and really I should have a different Twitter and Facebook account just for my fiction writing. However, that would take a lot of work to maintain and I'd have to split between managing these two different social media profiles and that's not really a great idea. Plus, Twitter's great for socializing and Facebook is pretty good for making friends and relationships but not so much for book marketing, which is why I haven't, I could have added a um, one of those Facebook boxes because I have a few thousand followers on Facebook for creativity, which looks kind of good because it looks like a lot of people are following me, but um, most of those people aren't interested in my fiction. They're following me for other reasons. And when you post something on your Facebook page, very few of your followers are actually going to see it unless you are paying to promote to those people. And so it's really easier just to use paid advertising on Facebook when I need to reach more people. Also, I don't want to divide people's attention too much. I don't really want them to come to this site and then follow me on Facebook or Twitter or go to some other site. What I want them to do is check out these limited pages. I don't love the menu up here. I, I, I would prefer if, I, if the menu is down here. And I could pay, I mean, I can get into the code and change that or I could pay a developer to do that, but it's not a big deal. It looks okay here. I have a contact, I have excerpts, I have free books and about page. I don't have a lot of options. Um, what I do have is this big fans read for free button. I just made this in Photoshop. It's just one picture. And to put it in the sidebar, all I did was I used that trick that I told you about before. I just go to new post and I'm adding something in the sidebar so I can just add media. It looks like I haven't uploaded it here yet. I'd probably use another computer, but I would just add the media that I want to make the button. And once it's there, oops, that's not working. Anyway, once I add an image, I can just highlight it and add a link. And then I can change to the code view and highlight all the code. And then just go to widgets and paste it as a text widget, just paste the code in. There's other ways, there's plugins where you can add pictures to the background, but that's all I've done here. This is just the code that I made in a regular post and then I went to code view and copied it and this just links to that picture that's on the sidebar. And so if people click this, they get to this page where I talk a little bit about my books and what they get when 
it's available. Um, I'll make another video explaining why I'm giving away all my books for free. That may not make sense. I know a lot of people are anti-free books because they feel like they have to make a living with their books. Um, in short, I'm not interested in selling a dozen books a month. I want to sell thousands of books a month. And the way that you can get your books to sell thousands of book a month, books a month is first you have to have a big following and you have to get a lot of reviews. And that's very difficult to do if people are paying for the books. So I give my books away for free to my followers who I know enjoy my books because they will be the, the early adopters and they'll leave the reviews and they'll tell other people, even if I give away 10,000 books, that's not a lot of people because there are millions of people who might want to read my books. So if I'm able to convince 10,000 people to download it for free, that's always going to work in my favor. And that's the only way I'll be able to sell a million books is if I can reach that first 10,000. And so that's why free can really work more powerfully than any other book marketing strategy, which is why I'll do it later. If I was a huge best-selling author, I wouldn't need to use free books. But when you're starting out as an indie author, you've got to use any advantage you have. And there's few advantages as powerful as free books. So I basically just offer people, if they sign up to my list, then they'll get these free books, um, five in the beginning when I finish them. And the interesting thing about this is that I haven't written any books yet. This is just a way to build my list so that when I finish some books, I can get some people to go and download it and review it pretty quickly. So I'm lucky because as a designer, I can put up all these nice covers. Um, you've got to have pretty decent covers or else it's going to be hard to convince people to actually get the books. Um, but you could also have, if I didn't have any covers, I could just have the titles and I could have an excerpt or I could have a really powerful summary. And if that's good enough to get their attention, then they might sign up anyway. And that's why I've um, added this excerpts page as well, because you don't want to, you don't want to, them to have to buy the book before they can start reading your writing, because you've done nothing to convince them that you're worthwhile yet. And if you, they haven't ever read any of your writing, they're not going to be likely to just sign up for something, give away their email or buy something from you if they don't know if you can write or not. So you want to have an excerpts page and you want to have at least enough writing to get their attention. And I don't have a great deal of high quality writing, but I put up sort of the first, um, kind of the intro to a few of my books, like the first few paragraphs or the first page. You don't need to put up too much. You don't really need to put up a whole chapter. You need to put up that first hook. So like just enough of the book to get their interest. And if you've done, I mean, usually you'll do a, um, a pre-episode or a prologue or something that comes before the book to hook the interest. A lot of times the first chapter is a little slower, but you have a very short prologue that's a few paragraphs and um, maybe some violence or something that's just really eye-catching. That's common in books. So for my books, I put up some. I'll change this later when I have better quality writing, but for now it's something that people can read and hopefully they'll think at least he's not a terrible writer. He's got, there's some quality here. Maybe his books will be okay and they're free. So, and he's giving away a whole bunch of them. So maybe they'll sign up. It's not foolproof. Um, and I still have to drive traffic to the site before any of this will work. And we'll talk more about that later. But these are some basic pages that you need and you don't really need more because at this point, giving a lot of more information, even if I had a much longer bio, if I had a lot of other things, um, too much information won't convince them to want the, buy the, to want the books. And really all I'm selling is the books. So I just have to prove that I'll be able to provide these high quality reads that people are going to enjoy reading. Um, that's ultimately, I mean, even if they sign up now, they're not going to find out maybe for several months if they actually enjoy my books, but at least they'll give it a shot and they'll get the first couple emails and they can unsubscribe later if my books don't please them. Um, I have tags here. I put an Instagram down here to give me a little bit of personality, but otherwise I don't have very much. I also made a separate page that's sort of hidden. Um, it has free books and then it has want to know what you're getting into. Click here. This is another page. This is where I would send people at the end of my books. So after they've finished a book that I put up on Kindle or somewhere else, they'd click on a link. I'd probably just use something like this same image. 
I just put it in the back of my book with something like get free books <clears throat> or did you enjoy this book? Get the next one in the series for free or something because I want to just get them back to my website and I want to get them to sign up to my list. So here I just have this brief letter saying, you know, why I want you to sign up and what you're going to get if you sign up. And these are all the books you're going to get. If you give it a chance, you can unsubscribe anytime. So what I don't have yet, I haven't actually set up um, any kind of an email list. So I have my offer and the pages work okay, but I need to add a form down here so that people can actually sign up to my email. And so the next video I'm going to make is just talking about how to integrate um, MailChimp or Aweber or some other e email service so that I can start building my email list. And we'll talk about that next.